Hey guys, hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to take on the nephritic syndrome. In this video, we will mainly focus on the pathophysiology and the clinical features which are found in case of the nephritic syndrome. Okay, so while in the subsequent videos, we will take on the specific types of the diseases which produce the nephritic syndromes but in this video we will mainly restrict ourselves to pathophysiology and the clinical features ok so let's give it a start see guys the nephritic syndrome is essentially an inflammatory process ok so it's an inflammatory process in which the inflammation will take place in the glomerulus ok so here is the glomerulus and in the nephritic syndrome the inflammation will take place in the glomerulus as a result of the inflammation in the glomerulus the first thing that will happen is the hematuria okay so the first and the foremost thing that helps us to know this is a nephritic syndrome is the hematuria that is we will have blood in our urine okay so, the hematuria is the first clinical finding in case of the nephritic syndrome. Also, since the hematuria is taking place, so in the urine, there will be RBCs, okay. But the RBCs will be dysmorphic RBCs, that is their shape will not be normal. The RBCs will be dysmorphic RBCs, okay. So, in the urine, there will be RBCs which will be dysmorphic RBCs and also in the urine, we will find the RBC casts, okay. So, these are the main urine findings in case of the nephritic syndrome. So, we have the hematuria and we have the RBCs and the RBC casts in the urine. Now, since in the glomerulus, there is inflammation. So, as a result of this, the urine output will decrease and whenever there is a decrease in the urine output, it is called as oliguria. So, in case of nephritic syndrome, we will have oliguria, that is, there will be a decrease in the urine output, okay. So, now look, since there is a decrease in the urine output, okay. So, since there is a decrease in the urine output, as a result of this, salt and water retention will take place, okay. So now, since the kidneys are excreting less of salt and less of water, it will lead to retention of salt and water and it will cause hypertension or increase in BP, okay, hypertension that is the increase in BP. So, this is an another prominent finding which is found in case of the nephritic syndrome. Okay. So, also since there is a decrease in the urine output or that is there is oliguria, it will also lead to the retention of the nitrogenous waste products within the body and the retention of nitrogenous waste products within the body is called as azotemia that is there will be elevation of urea which is written as blood urea nitrogen and there will be elevation of creatinine in the blood and this is referred to as azotemia okay so these are the main clinical findings Plus also in case of nephritic syndrome, there will be a little protein urea, not that of the nephrotic range. So there will be protein urea, blood, but this protein urea will be limited. Okay, so there will be limited protein urea in case of nephritic syndrome. So these are the main clinical findings which are found in case of the nephritic syndrome. Okay. Now, as a patient presents with these clinical findings and we suspect that this is a case of nephritic syndrome, the next thing which we do is to take the kidney biopsy. Okay, so in the next part, we'll take the, so we will take on the kidney biopsy. Okay, 
so what we will see in the kidney biopsy is that there will be hypercellular glomerulus okay so here is the biopsy picture which we will see in case of the nephritic syndrome what we'll, uh, we will see is that there will be increased cells in the glomerulus that is there would be hypercellular glomerulus okay so there would be hypercellular glomerulus okay and there will be neutrophils which would be present in the glomerulus okay so there would be neutrophils which would be present okay so the next thing which we uh, will do is that we'll take on the immunofluorescence okay so we will take on the immunofluorescence okay after the biopsy we will take on the immunofluorescence okay so we will go for immunofluorescence and this immunofluorescence will tell us whether there are immune complex deposition or not okay so whether there are immune complex deposition or not and after the immune fluorescence we will have the last resort which is the electron microscopy and this electron microscopy will tell us specifically the location of the immune complexes okay so where are the immune complexes located whether they are sub epithelial whether they are sub endothelial or whether they are intramembranous okay so this is all about the diagnosis of nephritic syndrome we'll start with biopsy we'll go for immunofluorescence and we will have the electron microscopy so this is all about the pathophysiology the clinical findings and the diagnosis of the nephritic syndrome okay so for more videos like this please subscribe to our youtube channel and also in the subsequent videos i'll take the specific diseases which will produce the nephritic syndrome